Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. St. Catherine businessman hospitalized following gun attack. A St. Catherine businessman remains hospitalized after he was shot and injured by unknown assailants along the Spanish Stone bypass. It is reported that around 12.40 a.m., the man was being accompanied by employees to dispose of garbage when they were pounced upon by two masked men on a motorcycle. The men brandished handguns, but the group ran and boarded their vehicle. The attackers fired several shots during which the busy zone sustained gunshot injuries to his back. He drove himself to hospital where he was admitted. An investigation has been launched by the Spanish Town Police. Latest St. Catherine double murder victims identified. The two men who were killed by gunmen in Orangeville District St. Catherine on Monday evening have been identified as 34-year-old business operator Omar Givans and 31-year-old security guard of Orangeville Primary School Dayton Dyer. It is reported that both men were at Given shop at about 8 p.m. when four men drove up in a white Honda Street motor car and opened fire hitting them. Given to receive multiple shots died inside the shop, Dwyer, who was seated outside, was also shot multiple times. This is the second double murder in St. Catherine North Police Division in two weeks. Jamaican farm worker dies in Canada. A Jamaican farm worker is dead after he was found unresponsive in his room by a co-worker in Canada earlier this month, the Ministry of Labour and Social Security stated on Tuesday. He has been identified as Daniel Brown. The cause of death has not been revealed. Reports were that on October 7, Brown returned home from work, prepared a meal and went to bed. The ministry in a release said that on the morning of October 8, Jamaican Liaison Services Acting Chief Liaison Officer Altier Riley was contacted that Brown was found unresponsive in his room by a co-worker. The paramedics were immediately called, and upon their arrival, Brown was pronounced dead. According to the ministry, a senior member of his family services unit has visited Brown's next of kin on several occasions following his passing. The ministry has consistently kept the family updated on matters relating to Brown's passing and has shared any information received by the coroner and other entities in Canada as soon as it is received, the release stated. Police constables found guilty of brutal beating of Denham Town Man. Two police constables were on Monday convicted of the brutal beating of a man in Denham Town, Kingston in 2019. Kenroy Chambers and Tevin Lake, who were found guilty of assault occasioning actually bodily harm, are to be sentenced in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on January 15, 2024. The cops were placed before the court by way of a summons on February 9, 2021 following an investigation by the Independent Commission of Investigations in the COM and a ruling by the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions. Videos of the beating went viral at the time and sparked a demonstration and outrage. The court had heard that the policemen were arresting men after he alleged they used explosive when they were forced, resulting to injury. In the video, cops appeared to be at a heated exchange with the complainant, were seen closely on the heels of the man who was descending a flight of stairs of a high-rise building in Denham Town. On reaching the ground floor, the complainant and lawmen were seen walking a short distance before a tussle ensued. The complainant was then thrown to the ground by the lawmen. While there, he received several blows from the constables before one of them stamped on his head. Man charged with abusing four-year-old son and the mother of his child. A corporate era man is charged with abusing his four-year-old son and the mother of his child. The accused, Paul Harper, made his first appearance in the matter at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday. Senior Parish Judge Lorian Cole Montague was told that on October 10, Harper and the mother of his child, along with his son, were at their home when an argument developed between the parents after the warmed have objected to Harper's method of scolding the child. This allegedly resulted in Harper kicking and hitting the woman, the Count was told. During the tussling between the two adults, the child was reportedly injured, although the extent of the injury was not revealed. According to the prosecution, prior reports have been made about Harper's alleged abuse of the child. Therefore, when the woman reported the altercation to the police, Harper was quickly arrested and charged. Did you assault the mother of your child? The judge asked. No, Your Honor, he answered. While the case file being completed, Harper is to return to court on November 13 for his lawyer to attend. Additionally, a fingerprint order was made for him and he was remanded onto the next court date. Shocking development over witness statements in Beach's Star trial. 
The Everton Beaches Stout McDonough murder trial faced a hurdle Tuesday morning when defense attorney Christopher Towson discovered a serious issue with the disclosure of statements and evidence. Towson, one of four attorneys representing Beaches Stout, raised a concern after he came across a statement which was allegedly given by Donovan Minto, the convict turned witness, who is currently on the stand. During cross examination of the witness in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston, Towson began to read a statement that was unfamiliar to him and immediately brought the issue to the attention of the trial judge, Justice Chester Stamp. We have observed a serious disclosure issue. There are two written statements concerning this witness that we have never been served. The first is five pages and the second is one of 16 pages handwritten. They related to this case significantly, Towson stated. The prosecutor's interjection, we have been serving certain documents ongoing. I am just as surprised as my friend to know that they were not served. We have served everything that we had on file about two weeks ago. Thousand clapped back, emphasizing that, as a matter of fact, these are statements we weren't even aware of. Justice Stamp described the issue as an extraordinary shocking development. It is a kind of disclosure that should result in sanction, but I can't see any course of action that will be in the interest of the justice, he stated. Thousand told Stamp that he has produced a document and said it contained very significant information which the events would have used to advance their case. That prompted Justice Stamp to ask the witness how many statements he gave to the police. Minter responded by holding up three fingers, one and one hand, and said he gave the number of statements to the police. Stamp then stood down the matter to give all parties involved three to go through the documents and allow the defense lawyers to have instructions from their clients. Beaches Stout and co-accused Oscar Barnes are on trial for the murder of former second wife, Tony and McDonald. It is alleged that Barnes, who was subcontracted to do the hit, ordered by Stout, and that he was directly responsible for stabbing Tony to death and cutting her throat on the Sherwood Forest Main Road in Portland before setting her and her motor vehicle on fire. The murder occurred on July 20, 2020. According to the witness, Beatty Stout promised to give him $3 million to kill Tony, who the businessman had accused of cheating on him with a policeman, robbing over $30 million from his account and sorting his name in the street. The witness, Minto, claimed he couldn't carry out the murder himself as a result, subcontracted Barnes for the killing. Minter is currently serving a close to 20 years in prison sentence for being the contractor in the murder. He agreed to give the statement of evidence in the case. Caretaker reports cousin after 135k in items stolen from home. A corporate era man is now before the courts after being charged with stealing household and personal items valued at over $100,000 from a house where his cousin works as a caretaker. Fernando Wisher has pleaded not guilty to larceny of dwelling. He appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday when the matter was mentioned before senior parish judge Lori Uncle Montague. The court was told that on August 29, the owner of the house left Jamaica and appointed the defendant's cousin as caretaker for the premises. However, according to the Crown, which he allegedly broke into the house and took items, including a television set, DVD player and colognes. The items were estimated to value $135,000. While presenting the matter to the judge, the prosecution revealed that the caretaker, upon discovering that items were missing from the house, suspected Wilshire to be involved. After he was confronted by his cousin, which he reportedly said, Me don't sell the things, a one life me have, so do what you have to do. This prompted the cousin to make a report to the police station, and Wilshire was arrested and charged. Judge Cole Montague ordered that which reported the nearest police station on Wednesdays between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. He is to return to court on January 12. Please remember to subscribe, like, share,